So let's shift gears a little bit since it is Future Fest. Um, looking to the future, right? We, we started 30 years in the past, but the future keeps accelerating. So let's maybe look 20 years in the future for an equivalent leap. Um, arguably, five years in the future might be equivalent to the past 30, but let's say 20. So the year 2035, what does the future look like, as far as you can tell? What would you... Uh, 20, 20, 20 years. 20, yeah, 2035. 20, okay. Yeah, 20 years. Um, it's always really tricky to predict the future. Um, <laughs> um, I mean, some of it's pretty obvious, like computing power is going to be just crazy. Um, and and the, the really, the big change is the cost of computing power, mm. um, not so much the sort of circuit density, sort of the Moore's Law thing, but if you, if you look at, say, what is the actual, um, you know, d dollars per, you know, uh, per instruction, mm -hmm. um, and, and that, that is... I mean, that, that, that cost is, is dropping exponentially. Mm -hmm. If you think about it, like, like if you're making a computer, you're, just, you're rearranging silicon and copper, mm -hmm. you know, so if, on, a, on a little chip. And once the capital cost of the development and the, the chip plant is paid for, uh, the, the, I mean, the, the marginal cost of a chip is very, very tiny. Um, so I think we'll see massively parallel computers uh, and, and computing power and storage being you know, as, as really as much as you want. Mm -hmm. um, and it's interesting, I too start with that. Like if I, I don't know what else to predict, but as a foundational for thing, sure. this seems like the safest starting, you know, premise. But then what does that ripple through to in fields like genetics and AI, which you mentioned, autonomous driving, space-related topics? I mean, just ubiquitous computing everywhere. Um, I, I think like AI is going to be incredibly sophisticated in 20 years. Mm. Um, the... When does it I mean, first it's, wake it's, up? It, it, like it seems to be accelerating. And the, the tricky thing about predicting things when there's an exponential is that an exponential looks like looks linear close up. That's right. um, and, and, but it's actually, it's not linear. So, uh, and, and AI appears to be accelerating, um, from what I can see. Um, and do you, it, for that, do you look at autonomous driving and point AIs, like the Siri-like functionality as your yeah. guidepost? Um, well, I had sort of a debate about something like, is AI accelerating or not? And the, the, like, he was saying, well, what's the y-axis? You know, if, you, if it's accelerating, um, you have t on the x-axis, but what's, what's the y-axis? And I said, well, I thought about that, and I think you could have a recursive y-axis so that uh, if, if, if at any point in time your, your predictions for AI are coming sooner or later, um, that, that actually would help define whether it's... Uh, accelerating or not. Whatever that axis was. So you mentioned look it's, at the net change. It's a recursive axis. Like, so if, if in any given year, if you, if you find your predictions are, are um, going further out or coming, further, or coming closer in, that, that actually you know, is, is one way to think of acceleration. Because like, like, otherwise, what's the, what's the qualitative or quantitative measure of, mm -hmm. of AI? Um, I was saying, like if a given technology is always 20 years in the future. Yeah, if, if it's always 20 years in the future, yeah. it's like more logarithmic. <laughs> um, so does AI seem like it's one of the most fastly accelerating things that you're aware of? Yes. Um, and I, I can certainly see that with, with autonomous driving, where, um, you know, three years ago, I thought it was 10 years away. Mm -hmm. And then two years ago, I thought it was five years away. Now I think it's three years away or less than three years away. Wow. So, and when you say a way, like, like, like released to market, available for consumer adoption, as, as opposed to prototyping? No, I mean, like the, like the technology works. There's a sort of second question as to when regulators would approve it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but, but like, Good luck the, with that. <laughs> the technology works in, in a, the technology works as a general solution. So, like, gotcha. autonomous driving, like, basically Across the anywhere. Way. So, it could be sooner for point things, like highway only, or? I mean, highway only, we're already in public beta with us at Tesla, so um, we'll be hopefully in the next several weeks releasing to, to all of the cars that have the autopilot hardware, which is all cars built in like roughly the last 12 months. Wow, wow. And so I, it, this seems like one of those things that once you've experienced it, the inevitability of it becomes more apparent. Kind of like first time I sat in an electric vehicle, it's just so clear and same with autonomous vehicles. Um, do you think that will help persuade public opinion and like, like that regulatory question is an interesting one because as technology continues to accelerate, human nature doesn't, and acceptance of change. I'm just not sure if there's, like as we look out in the future, should we assume that no matter how fast something like Moore's Law accelerates, there's always the counterbalancing force of human nature and habit? Um, yeah, I mean, this, 
yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, there's always going to be mm -hmm. the sort of, um, there's always going to be human nature, um, and it's sort of difficult to predict, mm -hmm. I think, what, what, what that will, how that will affect things. Um, <clears throat> but um, I mean, I'm not sure if I fully answered your question, so in, in, in terms of what, what I think 2025. Oh, yeah, please. Um, so for, for sure, ubiquitous computing, um, AI that's beyond anything uh, like the public appreciates today, um, I think we'll have um, most of the new vehicles being produced uh, being electric, um, and we'll be probably have a super majority of energy being produced being uh, sustainable. So I think I think we're on headed solar to primarily track. in your mind. Primarily solar, yeah. Um, and um, so I think those I think that those are sort of some good things. Like I think we'll be in, on a, hopefully on a good path for sustainable energy. Um, yeah, sooner is always better, but I think by 2035, I think we'll be substantially, um, like m most of transport, most of new energy being produced will be sustainable. Um, broadband everywhere? Broadband everywhere, yeah. Um, Mars colony? And hopefully a, hopefully a small base on Mars, or a small city on Mars in 20 years, yeah. I think, I mean, I think, city, I, did I hear? Well, okay, fine, town, village. <laughs> 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 Hamlet. <laughs> I mean, that's exciting. I mean, that could get people fired up about the future. Yeah, I, I do. I, I agree, exactly. I, I think that uh, the idea of being multi planet species and getting out there and exploring the stars is one of those really inspiring, exciting things. I mean, just as Apollo was incredibly inspiring um, to everyone around the world, and even those, I mean, only a very tiny number of people went there, but, I mean, vicariously, we all went there. And, and I think that's true of, of if, if we have a Mars base as well. Um, and it's very important that we have things that are exciting and inspiring in the future. Because I mean, otherwise, why get up in the morning? You know, mm -hmm. if it's just about one sort of sad problem after another. <laughs> it's, it's like life, life's not worth living. Are there, are there any other things that excite you a lot about the future beyond the multiplanetary species, perhaps AI, uh, although it may scare you, as well as excite you. Um, the autonomous vehicles. Are there any other planks that you think, looking forward 20 years, would be like, this is what I really get excited about? Well, um, I mean, so for sure, for sure, Mars and sustainable transport, like those items, I think, like, are really and sustainable energy. Those are, I think, really cool things. Um, and uh, I mean, in terms of getting excited about, it, I mean, it's. Like, uh, I think we'll probably start seeing like more like truly cyborg activity, like mm. human brain like 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 brain computer interfaces. Okay. Um, like there's, there's alongside amazing... the AIs that are purely yeah. synthetic. Yeah, I think so. It's the only way we can relate, I think. You know, and have a conversation. Yeah. yeah. And there are amazing things happen like mm -hmm. happening these days. Like there's um, they've been able to figure out how to do an artificial hippocampus um, mm. in in rats and monkeys, and um, and now they're looking at. Uh, uh, doing that to solve severe epilepsy, uh, about half of severe epilepsy cases originate in the hap um, sort of hippocampus, and, uh, and by having sort of an artificially augmented hiccup hippocampus, they can actually solve I believe, um, the severe epilepsy cases. Wow, that's amazing. So it's, it's like I'm like wow, and you can you can write, read and write information back to the chip from your brain at the individual neuron level, wow. like today. Pretty exciting. Yeah, the whole field of biology and things inspired by biology and the information systems biology uh, fascinate me personally as a, as a computer science-oriented uh, person.